Our conversation is about the age of entrepreneurship in our environment today. I was speaking to a couple of colleagues where I work and in some of the places where I'm given an opportunity to speak. That there are a few realities. Number one, is a person like myself, I'm not meant to tell you what to do or not what to do. My job is to share examples of areas where entrepreneurship is succeeding and working well. And then you yourself have what they call their hub moment. You say, oh, yes, then this can work this way for me. Entrepreneurship is a French word, which means one thing, that you step into this zone of need. Entrepreneurship is grounded, number one, on your own passion. Number two is on your own ability to do. And number three, on what society needs. The more problems we have in society, the more the opportunities are in terms of entrepreneurship. Someone says, some scholars say, that there is no ultimate security in investment other than opportunity. So an entrepreneur generally is one who responds with the speed, with agility, with the flexibility, respond to a problem, a socially, a socially and frequently ignored social problem. You'll have to be able to do something and ask yourself questions. Does society need this? Number one, do I have the ability to do so? Number three, do I have the passion for it? Today we live at the confluence of major disruptive forces. We are living in an age which is cultivating and throwing up all kinds of opportunities from problems. Number one, we have got today the age of urbanization. There are more people living in towns and urban areas than there were before. I know very well that in Africa alone, 60% of the population by 2025 will be in urban areas. So there's an accelerating surge towards urbanization. The second one is the demographic shifts. The fact that our communities and our societies and our people are changing, that's the creative opportunity. People are living longer. Today we have an average age of uh, people living on up to 90, 95. So again, there are opportunities there. And finally, the globalization, the connectography, the need for connectivity and collaboration and convergence and customization. So all of these four disruptive forces create problems, challenges, but they create also opportunities for making money. Now, I would like to quickly run through something that I've covered adequately in my entrepreneurship guide. Those are simple and easy rules for starting something that you love doing, that you have passion for, something that you can earn from sustainably, something that you can scale, and something that you can really be able to sustain and create momentum for it. Entrepreneurship has got three main phases. The first one is the foundation. You, the person starting the enterprise, what is your personality? You are an observer, you are a doer. Who are you? What are your strengths? What are your values? What are your beliefs? Can you absorb uncertainty? Are you simple and optimist? Or you are a confident person? Optimism means one thing, that you are expecting the best, best things to come forward. When you are confident, then you know that you can deal with uncertainty and adversity. In entrepreneurship, there is something called grit. Grit is the capacity to handle uncertainty and handle adversity and prevail. It's the capacity to respond and be flexible. The next one is, what is your idea? What is that distinguishing idea? Unique value proposition you are giving society. How different are you going to be? At a foundation stage, is this something that is going to create a difference in, among people's lives? Is it something that is responsive and relevant? So that is really the foundation, because it shapes your mindset and the expectation. Oh, number two, the second phase in entrepreneurship is the experience. What is the experience you are creating? Experience here means really what are the kind of goals, business goals. The point here after goals is the reality of your situation. What is the business environment? What, what is the market like? 
What's the regulatory and also legal framework that we are working in? What is the technology environment? So that, this is the reality. Then all are the choices and options you have now to start and the, the will to go forward and the techniques and tools you are going to use and finally the habits that you have to grow. This comes from the word growth. Growth is used here as an acronym. G stands for goals. R stands for the reality. And the O stands for the options and choices. Then W is the will to keep moving, to keep moving forward. And T is the tools, the techniques, and H is the habits that will move you forward. Motivation is a way of getting started. Habit is the H in growth. Lastly, the last phase in entrepreneurship is the sustainable trajectory. How do you build the momentum to go beyond this generation? Defend the legacies of the future other than legacies of the past. How do we scale? We, we've already talked about in the start of my presentation that there is a confluence of disruptive factors. How do you anticipate this is now sustaining and scaling? How do you challenge yourself? How do you interpret, interpret what? The trends and the implications and the actions we are supposed to take as a trader, as a businessman, as a farmer. You look at, for instance, Uganda. Uganda has got 10 major sectors that are attracting funding and that's where the opportunity is. Uganda has got infrastructure. There are all kinds of enterprises and entrepreneurial ideas within the ecosystem of infrastructure, within the ecosystem of power, within the ecosystem of agriculture, production and, uh, and processing in agriculture. They are ecosystems. Now, how do we scale? How do we hinge on the four disruptive factors? The disruptive factors are making something very interesting. Business is going to be faster by 10 times, especially with the onset of the 5G. And we are going to have scale going to 300 times. And we are going to have impact moving to 3,000 times. The impact of entrepreneurship. Uh, today, economic development and the economic engine of our countries is driven by nothing else but entrepreneurship. Is the mission of our generation. And this entrepreneurship drive creates a difference in the conditions of human race and in the conditions of our life, but also secures the future well in terms of options and possibilities. So really, an entrepreneur is very adoptable. An entrepreneur is authentic. An entrepreneur anticipates what will change and the implications of those change. And therefore, the priority actions is supposed to take, but also watches the risks and the treatment of those risks, irrespective of the markets, irrespective of the business environment, irrespective of the regulatory and the legal frameworks. An entrepreneur delivers value at a speed that amazes the customer, delivers value beyond money and on scale. This is entrepreneurship. The mission of our generation is entrepreneurship, creating something society needs, something you are passionate for, something you have the ability for, and something society is willing to pay for, and makes value beyond money. Thank you very much.